What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and another episode of Weekend Watch. Hollywood has a brand new power couple, Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. Both of their movies absolutely dominated at the box office this past weekend. Deadpool and Wolverine maintained number one for the third week in a row with $54.1 million. And officially, the movie is over $1 billion worldwide. But the surprising news of the weekend that we all did not expect was Blake Lively. Her film, It Ends With Us, landed in second place with $50 million in its opening weekend just domestically and worldwide. The movie is currently at $80 million. This is absolutely incredible. I did not see this coming. Last week when I was talking about the film, I kind of just threw it away. I was not anticipating this film to almost kick out her husband's movie and be number one. There's less than $4 million separating these two movies. Now, the only explanation that I can think for this is because the film is a movie adaptation from a book and apparently this book is extremely popular. Even though I personally have never heard of this book, I guess I'm on an island by myself. I don't know. But the fan base of this book obviously is huge. And they went out in droves to the movie theater and supported it this past weekend. I mean, I'm still shocked by this number. I could not believe it when I saw the website that I look at for the numbers every single week and I saw 50 million, I could not believe it. So that is incredible. This is probably one of the most shocking moments of the box office of the year so far. Now, Blake Lively definitely needed this for her career because the last movie that she starred in, that she was the main star of the movie, was The Rhythm Section. And that was about four years ago, I think back in 2020 or 2021, somewhere around there. And that movie did not do well. It really was an epic failure. So she needed this to be a win. And it absolutely is. So that's good for her career. It's great for her husband. Because I believe Ryan Reynolds also kind of worked with her behind the scenes with that movie. So they are officially the new Hollywood power couple without a doubt. So now let's move on to the rest of the top five. In third place is Twisters. Twisters is still performing well with a solid $15 million. I mean, it's going up against Deadpool and Wolverine and this surprise that we were not expecting. So Twisters is still doing well. In fourth and fifth place, what not what is not doing well is Borderlands. Unfortunately, Borderlands landed in fourth place. Now, I did predict that Borderlands was going to break into the top five, but I expected it to be a little bit higher, making a little bit more money, but that did not happen. So Borderlands is officially an epic failure because this movie only brought in 8.8 .8 million. And the reason why it's an epic failure is because I heard the budget for this movie was between 100 and 120 million dollars. And with the release of Alien Romulus right around the corner, there's no way. There's no way this movie is going to go up and kind of, you know, become more popular with aliens coming. There's just too much competition. So Borderlands, it's only going to get worse from here. And it's just, there's no chance. There's no, th this one's DOA, pretty much. It's dead on arrival. There's no chance for this movie to get any kind of money back. So it is an epic failure. And I'm not really sure what to do now because my plan was to go and check it out maybe tomorrow or even on Tuesday. But now I'm not so sure. Even though I always say that everyone should check out movies for themselves and judge for yourselves and have your own opinions. But when you see a D plus cinema score, that's pretty bad. That's like one of the lowest cinema scores I've ever seen. So I'm not really sure what to do with Borderlands. And finally, in fifth place is Despicable Me 4, bringing in $8 million. And with that $8 million, it pushed the worldwide total 
to 800 million. So Despicable Me 4 performed better than I thought it was going to. And the main reason for this is because this franchise, I mentioned this in a prior Weekend Watch video, Despicable Me 4 and this whole franchise in general just does extremely well overseas. They love this franchise. They eat it up. They can't get enough. So because of that, the international numbers were extremely well weak at were does that make sense they were extremely good well i don't know the numbers were high week after week internationally so that really helped out the worldwide total for despicable me 4 so that is awesome all right so what is new at the box office this coming weekend i did mention the main brand new release i believe i did and also two more smaller limited releases so the main release we're all looking forward to this coming friday is alien romulus i cannot wait for this movie i'm so excited for it i have a new love of the alien movies i hate to say the whole franchise because i'm not the biggest fan of the franchise as a whole but Alien and Aliens, the first two movies, I've really grown to love and appreciate. And I'm looking forward to Alien Romulus because the director, Fede Alvarez, who we all know directed the Evil Dead remake, he has chosen to go mainly practical effects with this movie. And that is how it was done back in the day with the first two Alien films. So I'm just so looking forward to this. I've heard nothing but positive reviews so far. I think this is going to be one of the best movies of the year, of the summer. I'm so excited for it. So Alien Romulus, if you're looking for horror, monster, great effects, something to keep you on the edge of your seat, then you're definitely going to want to check out Alien. But just in case Alien is not your cup of tea, the other two smaller options, we do have skincare and also My Penguin Friend. Now, what is brand new on streaming this week? Because as I always say, there's always options on streaming for you. And pretty much every single streaming service has something brand new. Starting over on Netflix, we have a brand new film called The Union. Now, this is a very interesting matchup. We have Mark Wahlberg and Halle Berry. And apparently in the movie, they play former high school sweethearts. So... That's going to be interesting to see how their chemistry and their dynamic is. So I think I'm going to watch that one just to see if, if it's believable or not. I don't know. Have they ever worked together before? I don't think they have. So that'll be pretty interesting. All right. Over on Max, this debut was revealed just a couple of days ago. It's also my gold star recommendation for the week. It is Furiosa. Now, the reason why it's my gold star recommendation is because, as we all know, Furiosa did not perform well at the box office. It was kind of embarrassing, <laughs> to be honest. It didn't even make $100 million. That is, that's pretty bad, pretty bad. I'm assuming a lot of you chose to wait for streaming because you knew. You knew it was going to happen. You knew it's Warner Brothers. It's going to go to Max eventually. So my hope is that you check out this movie because it is worth checking out. Trust me, it is a well-done film. Chris Hemsworth is amazing in the movie. So that's why it's my gold star recommendation. If you waited, if you purposely waited for streaming, then please check it out on Friday. All right, over on Hulu, we have the debut of Immaculate with Sydney Sweeney. I enjoyed this movie. I do recommend that you guys watch it for yourselves. I will caution you. The ending is like, whoa, like a little, little shocking. You got to kind of prepare yourself. Pretty much if you enjoyed the first Omen, you'll like this one too. It's very much along the same lines, but um, on opposite sides, if you will. So if you like the first Omen, give Immaculate a chance. All right, Disney Plus. We finally have something new to talk about on Disney Plus. Disney Plus has the premiere of Star Wars Young Jedi Adventures Season 2. I think I'm going to bypass on this one. It's Star Wars. I'm not into Star Wars, so that one I do not need. Amazon Prime is debuting a brand new film called Jackpot. This is starring Aquafina and John Cena. 
that kind of rhymes. Was that intentional? I don't know. But we'll see how this one is. I wrote it down on my streaming list, so I'll check it out. I mean, it's probably going to be a three-star average movie, but we will see. You never know. Amazon Prime is also debuting Night Swim. So if you do not have Peacock and you couldn't check it out over there, you certainly didn't go to the movie theater to see it, and you do want to stream it, then Amazon Prime this coming week. All right, speaking of Peacock, Peacock this week is debuting season three of Bel Air. So if you've been following that show, then this coming week, brand new season for you. Paramount Plus has the debut of RuPaul's Drag Race Global All-Stars. What a long title. That is a very long title. I never got into RuPaul's Drag Race. A lot of people were recommending it to me. I just never got there. And now it has like so many seasons and all stars. It's gone global. I don't know. I don't think I could ever get into it. There's, It's just too much. It's just too much. And finally, over on Apple TV Plus, we have the return of Vince Vaughn in a brand new series called Bad Monkey. So that is everything happening at the box office and also on streaming. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts about Blake Lively's new film, It Ends With Us. Did you go check it out at the theater this weekend? And is it a popular book? Please let me know because honestly, I've just never heard of it. I'm completely ignorant to this information. So comment down below. Let me know anything you know about this book. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.